My father, your friend, pastor, brother, uncle, grandpa, brother-in-law. What does? What did I forget? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Anyway, welcome all, and it's a real treat to have you all here with us today, and we are in for a good time because we are celebrating. 90 years of Ira Taylor's life. All that's good and perfect comes from you. So guess what 
he won't know it's his birthday if we don't sing happy birthday. So, I think we will begin with a nice, rousing happy birthday. So let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. one minute so that some of us just coming in can get settled in. So could you please be seated everyone right now? Just before we uh, go to the buffet, I want to make a toast. So if I can have the music down. Thank you. Our theme, the mood that I want to put you in this afternoon is nostalgia. And, uh, okay, I think we're ready. Oh my goodness, what a rage. My dear dad has hit this age. He's 90 years young and in his glory, dad is so special. Today, we celebrate his story. Ira M. Taylor, husband, father, pastor, and friend, brother, uncle, grandpa, such a godsend. Born in beautiful Nevis, a child known to obey, dad has always been prayerful, thanking God every day. And if a wish that I could make would come true, it's clear I'd ask the Lord to give you another healthy, happy 90. Oh, raise your glasses with me. Happy 90th birthday to And my brother, well, yeah, that works. Sorry. I'm going to call him my brother Dean, and he's going to say grace, and uh, we will proceed with my instructions <laughs> to the buffet table. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful and grateful to be here today. 
We're so blessed and we're thankful for all the lessons that you have poured upon each one of us. Uh, we have come to celebrate the 90th birthday of our father. And we do thank you for him. And as he always says in, in one of the passages of scripture that says that in him we live, we move and have our being. And uh, we're so grateful that uh, you have given him life that you have held him all these years, that you have protected him, that you have surrounded him with your presence and, and have shown him uh, the way that he must go. Uh, scripture tells us that, uh, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and that he delighteth in him. And we're so, far, so glad that you have ordered his steps and have brought him to this time of his life. We're thankful, Father, for being faithful God. Uh, we know that without you, we, are, we would all be consumed. and that um, uh, So we are, we're grateful, Father, that you have allowed Dad to reach this milestone. We thank you that um, you have blessed him and have favored him um, uh, and have poured out uh, your love and your grace upon him. And uh, he has been a blessing to each one of us, and that's why we're here uh, to celebrate with him. We pray that uh, the food that has been prepared for us will be one that will nourish us and uh, strengthen us to do your will so that we may all give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Anyway, obviously we have to have the honored table go first. So... We will be um, asking that table, and we will be helping. So don't worry about that. And then we will have table 10 and table 9, OK? So table 1, 10, and 9. <laughs> Happy 
birthday, Dr. Taylor. Hope you enjoy your day. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Mary Grace and Michael. <laughs> Hi. Love, Love you. you. <laughs> I'm pushing Pastor Taylor the best on his birthday. And I pray that God bless keep on blessing him and that he'll have many, many more birthdays just like this. Pastor Caleb, I wish you God's richest blessing on this year 90th birthday. And I hope that God will bless you with many more years. Thanks for who you are. God bless. Best of birthday wishes, Daddy to you. God bless you. Pastor, I wish you a happy and a prosperous new year, and I hope you may live to see many more. To a wonderful pastor, a kind friend, and a faithful servant of God, happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. Uh, happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday, Daddy. I love you. <laughs> happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. <laughs> Greetings, Pastor Taylor. Greetings. <laughs> Happy birthday, many blessings. Happy birthday to you, Pastor. May the Lord continue to bless you always. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Pastor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Cheers. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Love you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Iroh. Happy birthday, Iroh. Happy, Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. Enjoy. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor T, my, my adopted dad. Happy birthday, Dad. I love you. Nice. I love you, Dad. Message to you, Pastor Taylor. Happy birthday, I love you, and I wish you many more. All the best to you, Daddy Taylor. I hope you live to reach your dream of 100. <laughs> Uncle Ira, love, 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 and laughter. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Uh, I'm trying to catch up to you, so keep going. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. Uh, may have many healthy more, healthy more, uh, more healthy birthdays. To my most favorite pastor. <laughs> May you live to see another hundred, another ninety actually. Healthy. Healthy. Divine health. God bless. Happy birthday, Mr. Nevis from Miss St. Kitts. <laughs> Excellent, Reverend Taylor. Excellent. Blessings, long life, strong life. Happy birthday, my brother. Uh, Happy birthday, Ira. All the best to you. Thank you for being such an encouragement. Happy birthday, God blessings. Happy birthday, we love you. Happy birthday, blessings to you. Happy birthday, and uh, may God's great spirit in all of this ahead. Happy birthday. We wish for you all that you wish for yourself and much more. Cheers. God's blessing and a happy birthday to you, Pastor. Love you. God's blessings. Peace. Happy birthday, continue to love. Happy birthday, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, love you. Happy birthday, and I wish you all the best. Happy birthday, sir, and God's wishes and blessings for the rest of your life. Pastor, we just thank God for you. We thank him for the time that you were able to share with us in Maryland. And so congratulations on this 90th birthday that you are celebrating. We love you. Pastor Taylor. What an amazing nine decades. May God bless you in many more wonderful, healthy years. We love you. God's abundant blessings and happy, happy birthday.
happy 90th birthday to my friend and associate, Pastor Taylor. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. Many, many blessings in the coming years. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. It's wonderful to see you looking so young. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. It's just great to see how energetic you still, you still are. And um, love you lots. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pastor T. You're 90, you're on your way to 120. May God bless you and keep you strong. And I'll see you soon. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. May God richly bless you and continue to give you long life and prosperity. And may you pass it on to your children, your grandchildren, and your great grand and your great great grand. God bless you. Happy birthday, Grandpa Taylor. God bless you. Happy birthday to the Apostle of Love. Blessings on you and another hundred more, if it is possible. All the best for a wonderful year and may God bless you. Happy 90th and I wish you many, many, many more blessings. Congratulations, Pastor Taylor. It was a pleasure meeting you, knowing you, and having you as my pastor. Congratulations, Pastor. We pray that God will continue to bless, keep God, and protect you, and you'll live to see many, many more birthdays. Congratulations to my adopted dad, and I love you very, very much, and I pray and hope that you will live to see many, many more happy birthdays. We love you. From Stan, Belinda, little baby Chase, and my husband Stan. My pastor, let me reach 50 before you get to 90 again. <laughs> I wish you a successful and healthy 20 drug. May it find you healthy, full of vigor to face the challenges you will come. You mean a lot to me, more than you'll ever know. Congratulations, all the best. Happy birthday, Pastor T. That's what I was going to say. Happy birthday, Pastor T. <laughs> Happy birthday. God's blessings. Cheers. Happy birthday, Aunt Clara. All the best. Many more, Aunt Clara. <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> you can really start digging into the, the dessert. Um, as soon as you're, you're ready, so that we can move on with the program. Thank you. Cheers and congratulations, Pastor Taylor, for reaching a wonderful milestone. I hope I look just as good as you when I reach your age. Violet Weeks. Hearty <laughs> congratulations to Pastor Taylor, and we wish that we will have uh, him a very long time. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you in 10 years' time. <laughs> Happy birthday, and may there be many more to come. Happy birthday, Cheers. and may the next 10 years be as excellent as the first 90. Yeah. Cheers. I'm Clara, it's a delight to share this day with you. Congratulations and happy birthday and God's blessing for many, many more years. Happy birthday, Daddy. Uh, I hope you're coming for a cup of tea soon. I love you. Happy birthday, Daddy. Um, I was there at your eight chip. I'm here at your nine chip. Look forward to seeing you from the century. Happy birthday. Blessings to you, Pastor T. Trust by God's grace that you'll continue looking up for the many blessings that he's blessed you with. Long life, health, and everything. God bless. Love you, Faith. Happy birthday, 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 many returns. Uncle. Many more. Happy birthday, Aguara. Happy birthday, Uncle Ira. Many happy returns. Happy birthday, Uncle Ira. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Look at the camera. Birthday. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> 
Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. All of the very best to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor, and many more. Happy birthday, Daddy, and many more years. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brother T, and many, many more. Happy birthday, cuz. All the best. God bless you. Happy birthday, Daddy. <laughs> Wish you all the best. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pastor. All the best, yeah? Here is to you, Mr. Taylor. Happy birthday. Waiting to begin, I, uh, my Aunt May, Aunt Marie, my dad's last sister, she loves brooches. And, oh, she found it. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, Alfie. Okay, when I ask you how you're doing, what are you going to say? How's everybody doing? Excellent. Excellent. Okay, that's why I put some of you in the corner. How is everyone doing? Excellent. Excellent. Good. Uh, during dinner, we were really entertained by a special pianist, Jillian Hobson. Thank you so much for coming and playing for us today. And I also want to thank Janet for her little medleys on the steel pan. And I cannot forget my sons who put together some hymns for Grandpa. So you know what they started? I said, look here, I, I, we don't like loud music, OK? But you know, my, my boys were not really into loud music. But um, so they went and they started playing funeral songs. I said, <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. This is a party. And I want all of you who think that because my dad is 90, that is going to be, you know, kind of boring. Oh, no. It's not going to be boring. We're going to have what every party has. Right? Okay. Da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. 
It's electric. Woo! <laughs> okay. So how many of you know what that was? It's electric. So we're going to have all the Canaanites. <laughs> they're going to come up with their canes and they're going to go, da 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 It's electric. Down south, down south, down south, up north, up north. <laughs> they, they don't know what they're dancing to, you know. <laughs> okay. By definition, you all remember I'm a school teacher. And some of you are not looking at me. That must come from my cousin Paula. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of call and response in our history, right? So, you know, you remember back home when we were singing, we would call out the hymn, and then the, so we can't get away from it. So when I'm talking, Paula is responding, right, Paula? Right. Okay, looking back, by definition, nostalgia is a yearning to return to some treasured experience from the past. Historically, nostalgia has often been viewed in a negative light, seen as a way of living in the past and as an impediment to hope and the future. However, new research suggests that nostalgia can have positive effects as well. It is the warm glow we feel when recalling the past. Like, I remember as a boy when I was walking on the beach of Nevis. <laughs> I remember going and getting some coconut water from brother so-and-so in Nevis. <laughs> and my mom would say, Nevis again? <laughs> so those are things I want you to remember. So how is everybody feeling? <laughs> and every time I say Nevis, you're going to say? Nevis, Nevis again. Okay. Oi. <laughs> okay, so this afternoon, we'll recall, highlight, special recollections of Dad's past, important events, people, and places. Nevis. Music is also a strong trigger of nostalgia, and we will be favored with special selections by family and friends. So we want you to look forward to an afternoon of blessing. Before I continue, I want to welcome, and this will continue with my father when he comes up, because he wants to uh, recognize people who have come from far. So I just want the people who have come long distances to be here. I want to thank you so much for the time that you took. And I know many of you have to run back tomorrow for your old year's night service. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for our family that have traveled many, many miles to be here, we really, really appreciate you coming, and it's so good. And I feel a buzz in the room, yeah. and I know you all feel in. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. At this time, you know what? One thing with our family, we all have different talents. Like, you're not going to see me come stand up here and sing. But we have the musical people in the family, and we, are, we also have... Uh, somebody who is creative and artistic, and it's my brother, Hudson, and he's our, my first, uh, my, my dad's first child, Hudson, and he's going to present us with a video recalling the past. Uh, 
Happy birthday, Dad. I just want to say how lucky we all are to be here to, at your 90th. You know, I go to a lot of events, and whenever they say, Hudson, we'd like you to take some pictures at this guy's 90th birthday, well, I go with the expectation that it'll be about 10, 15 people. Because, you know, they're either blank or blank. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Figure it out. But here we are, almost 200 people, and we are blessed because it's your life of service that has brought us all here today to celebrate your 90th. More, more than anything else in life, you can have money, you can have fame, but I'll tell you, a life of service to others tops the cake. I'd like to, thank you, I'd like to show you a few clips of um, a little video I put together. It's about 12 minutes long. Please hold on to your horses. I want to make some exceptions and some disclaimers. <laughs> Mom and Dad have a lot of friends from Washington who are here today, and I want to thank them for coming. Very close people. <laughs> They're not represented as much in this video because I've really contained it to family and close friends. And I'd like you to, I put some little subtitles in it to just make it a little bit more cheerful than, than what it should be. But. <laughs> and um, I put a piece, three pieces of music. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Hang on. To touch the face of friends and loved ones, to hear the laughter and to feel the tears.
gave us a warm feeling looking back. So my dad um, felt that he got called. Well, I shouldn't say he felt. He knew that he, had, he was called to the ministry at a very young age. And so to prepare for the ministry, he went to Jamaica. And you know the story, what happened. When he went to Jamaica, he came back with something. Someone. Someone. The beautiful Eileen Taylor. And if you know my mom, she's not just a pretty face. She has many talents, but it's Daddy's birthday today. So we are going to celebrate Dad, and we remember Antigua. And anybody here from Antigua remembers my Daddy from Antigua? Woohoo! Let's hear. Good, good. All right. So four of us were born in Antigua, and um, then we moved to Trinidad. And in Trinidad, we got to be a Trinidad, Trinidadians? Okay, okay. Anybody from, anybody from the uh, Pilgrim Holiness Church in Emory Street in Trinidad? Good. Linda. We know Linda from way back. And I know everybody knows Linda, but we know Linda since we were like really little. Uh, at this time, when we were in Trinidad, we got to be with our cousins. And it was the best time because they used to come to San Fernando to visit us, or we would go to Port of Spain to visit. And Uncle Wynn, Aunt Doreen, thank you so much for coming all the way from Indiana to be with us. Thank you, Grace, Michael, Michael Jr., M Taylor Marie, for coming from Cincinnati, Ohio. And thank you, Paula, Meadow, and Jonathan, for coming from Indianapolis, too. And uh, Phoebe, who is Jonathan's mother, she and her, his older brother uh, were not able to make it. So at this time, we want the Wingrove Taylors to talk. Uncle Wynn is going to say a few words first, and then we're going to have the um, Wingrove Taylor songsters. <laughs> Christened me a Canaanite. <laughs> we're, we are increasing Canaanites in the family. And so here I am. When I think of my brother Ira, of course he is the older brother. <laughs> and this, I think of him as a prince. You didn't know we were royalty, did you? <laughs> but we are part of it through Ira himself, who is royal. But he's not only a prince, he's a prince of purity. He lived this kind of flawless, at least if there were any flaws, he didn't tell me. He looked like a nice boy, <laughs> unlike a brother he had. But he was pure in his approach to life, and I thank God for him. He's not only a prince of purity, but he is a prince of preaching. I would journey any number of miles to hear my brother preach. God has given him a talent of ministry. Some time ago, the Oakwood people invited both of us to come and speak 
when we were in the United States or North America for a conference. And sometime later, Ira got invited to Oakwood. You know why. <laughs> he is the prince of preachers. <laughs> but he's not only the prince of preaching, he is the prince of pastors. And all of the friends today from various churches where he ministered can thank God for a man with a pastor's heart. He is the prince of people. Ira could come into an area and in three months he knows more people in the area than I know in three years. <laughs> he loves people. He is a people person. So he is the prince. Prince of purity, prince of preaching, prince of pastors. Prince of people, but he's also the prince of peacemaking. Ira had a heart that never could brook division. He loved people and he loved peace. And then I must close with the fact that he is the prince of painting. <laughs> you saw one of his pictures there. And if he is not the prince of painters in terms of the pieces that he has produced, he certainly is the prince of painters in terms of the passion that he has. And so I greet my brother today and pray that God may continue his good hand upon him. Thank you so much, dear Uncle Wynn. Miss Paula. <laughs> Can someone find our sister? <laughs> um, while, we, um, while we wait for our sister to arrive, uh, I'm Brainerd, and this is Mary Grace, and our sister Paula um, is somewhere outside. Um, I just want to say that uh, the piece that we're about to sing is called Undivided, and I guess it's connected in many ways uh, to what my dad just said about my uncle being the prince of, of uh, peacemaking, or peacemakers, um, not being able to brook division. Um, we are currently in the Festival of Kwanzaa, and uh, for those of you who know what I'm speaking of, today is actually the day in which we celebrate Nia, the principle of purpose. But the very first day of Kwanzaa is Umoja, which means unity. And um, we are invited to be united, to be of one mind and one heart, both as a community, but also in terms of, of things spiritual. And we need to um, encourage each other to not let things come between us and um, uh, create that division of which my uncle is... Um, so wary of. Uh, in keeping with the uh, theme nostalgia, I would also say that um, the Africans do have a term for this and a symbol. And uh, the symbol is Sankofa. And Sankofa means go back and get it. We're always invited to take whatever it is that comes from our past and uh, bring it into the future and, I mean, into the present and carry it forward to the future. So in keeping with Sankofa and Umoja, we shall sing um, this piece, Undivided. We may worship different ways. We may praise and yet spend all of our days living life divided divided but when we seek him with open hearts he removes 
the walls we've built that keep us apart. We trust him to unite us in our hearts. We're undivided, worshiping one Savior, one Lord. In our hearts, we're undivided, bound by his spirit. It doesn't matter if we agree. All he asks is that we serve him faithfully and love as he first loved us. He made us in his image. In his image. And in his eyes. We are all the same. And though our methods, they may be different. They may be different. Jesus is the bond that will remain. In our hearts, we're undivided. Worshiping one Savior, one Lord. Taylors had to go back to town because we lived in the country, the second city of San Fernando. It was called Las Lick. And I know if you're from the West Indies, you got, you know, when your friend's leaving, you hit. And you, so that's what was happening up here. We had to have a Las Lick. Okay. Um, Antigua. So, Antigua and. Toronto are all in one at this time. So I'm going to call on Elton Harris to come and uh, say a few words. Let me first say that I met Pastor Taylor in the early 50s when uh, he came from Antigua to the beautiful island of Barbuda, not Bermuda. <laughs> so many people get mixed up with Bermuda and Barbuda, but this was the island of Barbuda, and he came there to have some special services. It was during that time that I got converted. So what I'm saying is I got converted under the preaching of Pastor Ira Taylor. I moved not too long after to Antigua. And I lived just around the corner on St. John Street, and just around the corner from the then Pilgrim Holiness Church. I had the privilege and pleasure of having as my pastor none other than Pastor Ira Taylor. I wasn't there too long before recognizing the love of the people within and without the church, 
for this man of God. His way of walking, I can't imitate it. I don't think anyone can, except Marie, his sister. <laughs> his shoulders were square. He stood straight as no one else I could remember seeing. And he would walk up and down the streets of St. John's. Let me use the word strut. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he was doing up and down the um, streets of Antigua or St. John's. And in those days, Pastor, Eyes, uh, Pastor Taylor rather wore what we would call a hat. So while he is walking up and down the streets of um, Antigua, as you know, in the Caribbean, when you pass someone that you really love and know, you would say whether it's morning, good morning, good afternoon, or good night. And I remember several times walking, not with him, but I just happened to be in the area when he's downtown, and particularly the ladies. The ladies would um, pass the tailor, and pass the tailor would tip his hat. That's the way he would respond. But I do believe, quite honestly, that Pastor Taylor recognized that he was losing his hair <laughs> from tipping and replacing, from removing and replacing his hat. So consequently, what he was doing was just, he wasn't removing his hat at all. That's the impact this man of God had on the people of Antigua. I can very well remember one week when Pastor Taylor thought he should have a prayer and fasting for a week. He himself, not the church, he was going to pray and fast for a week from one Sunday to the next. And at that time, the choir was on the platform and Pastor Isaac, uh, Pastor Taylor rather, excuse me, was preaching the final Sunday, and on that particular day, he collapsed. It so happened that my sister was in the front row and she broke his fall. The ambulance was called and he was sent to the hospital. Not knowing the severity of his illness, just about the entire church flocked to the altar, starting to pray for Pastor Taylor. And I can remember one lady in particular. I think Sister Taylor and Pastor Taylor would remember her by the name of uh, Bay. And she would, um, she professed at the time to be a Christian. Don't cross her up. She will give you a piece of her mind and a piece of her tongue. But on this particular day, while the pastor was in the hospital, she was crying, and she was praying out so loud that I heard her saying, Lord, don't take me, Pastor. Take me. <laughs> That's the way she carried on for I don't know how long. But the Lord knew best. He knows best. So therefore, Pastor Taylor was revived, and he was brought back to us. Now, after coming to Toronto, and here for a number of years, and having gone through approximately four pastors, here comes Pastor Ira Taylor again to be my pastor. I couldn't have been more pleased. Pastor Taylor, little do you know the number of people you have influenced for good due to who you are and the way you have conducted yourself. You have lived well, loved well, laughed loud and often. You're the kind of person who makes other people happy by your caring hug and contagious smile. For guiding me in the right direction during my early years as a Christian, I thank you. Therefore, I celebrate Therefore, I'm celebrating you today for many, many wonderful reasons. Happy 90th birthday, 
And may God's blessings continue to be with you in the years to come. Let me say it loud and clear. We still love you, Pastor Isaac or Pastor Taylor and Sister Taylor. We still love you. Thank you so much. Okay, Donna. Um, when Elton was talking, he talked about um, my dad strutting and walking. And it's so true. But I know that as you get older, you really need something to help you walk with. And that's why I celebrate all the Canaanites. <laughs> For those of you, if you don't get it, if you're a little slow, a Canaanite is somebody who walks with a cane. <laughs> okay. But you know, my dad, Donna, <laughs> I, I'm not... I know why I put table 16 back there. <laughs> but Donna, you know dad. And a couple years ago, dad had an accident. And um, he, 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 he damaged um, one of his legs. He was in the hospital for a while. Anyway, if you see dad now, oh, one of my, friend call, one of my friends called him and he says, um, she said, Pastor Taylor, I can't, I just can't believe, this is a friend from St. Croix, because we lived in St. Croix too, I can't believe that you're 90. He says, oh, my dear, I don't feel like 90. I, I, I feel like 30. <laughs> but, but just don't ask me to run around the block. <laughs> <laughs> so, Donna, when you ask Daddy, how are you, Daddy? Wait, let Donna show you. I'm fine, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. <laughs> I'm excellent. <laughs> so, honestly, honestly, the knee is going down a little bit, right? Yes. But he's still excellent. <laughs> anyway. But you know what, Dad, I did some research. You know, I like to research. And I found that canes go way back. Didn't Moses have one? Well, listen, Canaanites, you're in good company. <laughs> King Tut, in his tomb, in his pyramid, they found a cane. He had several. And let me skip. I could count, but I don't want to keep you here all day by telling you about all the people who use canes. But do you know, in the early part of the century, or even in the 18th century, a gentleman never left his home without his hat and his walking stick. And so, Dad, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to be Mary Poppins. Maybe you don't want to be some of the other shady people who, wear, who carry canes. But we decided, so Donna is going to make a presentation to you. We decided that you need a cane. Here is a candy cane. <laughs> My dad also likes sweets. He loves chocolates. Okay. <laughs> okay. Saturday morning, official market day in San Fernando. Mom, 
leaves for work at TN Tech just until noon. Dad is the official market shopper and quickly grabs the straw basket. He must get to D market before the fresh produce is picked over and sold. Going through the door, he bids us goodbye, but first reminds us all, all five of us, to only play in our yard. We watch him jump into the royal blue Morris Minor, the world's greatest small car, yet adequate to hold our family, all seven. <laughs> the car heads down Imry Street, then right onto Blanche Fraser. Through the living room window, we watch and gaze diagonally across the pasture with the cows until the royal blue Morris Minor turns the corner out of sight. Dad will be shopping for a while. Hopefully he will meet Brother Simeon, who will engage him in a session of prayer right in the middle of the public market. <laughs> Soon the tailored children are out of their yard and in the Seelys yard, or playing in the tall, coarse savanna grass bordering the canal. It's now mid-morning and the San Fernando sun is hot. Daddy, Daddy, I see the car, shouts Donna. <laughs> Always on the watch as she tries to call us home. Soon you see tailored children coming from all four corners of Lesafor East, <laughs> trying to race home before the Morris Minor parks in front of the church, all except Althea. <laughs> Daddy comes in. He puts down his basket. He gathers his children. Where is Althea? Soon, she slips in the back door, sits at the kitchen table, pretending that that's where she was all the time. <laughs> Daddy comes up. Yes, Daddy? Yes, Daddy. Well, I know Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. But, but Daddy Paul, no, Daddy. <laughs> no, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. How long? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Yes, Daddy. Sorry, Daddy. I won't do that again. So sorry. It's time uh, my brother Paul is going to um, do a trumpet solo. And um, he loves the trumpet. As a matter of fact, the music is on the boys' side. <laughs> the girls didn't get it. My sister Althea, she really could have made it to Hollywood. <laughs> she told you just exactly. Yes, Daddy. I couldn't do that. And dad just melted. <laughs> I, I don't think all through the years of growing up out there I got one lash. <laughs> she can do whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, daddy. <laughs> yeah. And dad just. <clears throat> but I got it for her, I think. <laughs> I got it myself. And I got it for her. But there will be a judgment. <laughs> and God knows the hearts of all of us. <laughs> but it really was just wonderful. And that blue Morris Minor we used to go up to the Belmont Church for the quarterly. 
and all seven of us in that little Morris Minor. And there was a hill called the Pointer Pier Hill. And that Morris Minor could not make it up the hill <laughs> with the seven Taylor children. And so what we did was Hudson and I would get out of the car and we would push from behind. <laughs> and Dad would have his foot all the way on the gas. <laughs> and we made it up the Pointer Pier Hill. And uh, my sister is signaling me to stop now and to play the trumpet solo. Is that not right? Yes. <laughs> but if I can share a story about my dad that I've observed over the years, I'll play my trumpet solo in 30 seconds, is his love for my mom. And uh, just looking at them, even now, he treats her like a queen. <laughs> and if you can see them every morning, my dad is speaking to her in the room early in the morning telling stories and my mom is like the lady listening. And it's just like he's courting her for the first time. That's the honest truth. And I have all these years, I've never heard my dad raise his voice at my mom or yell or scream, <laughs> nothing like that. It's a Psalm, Psalm 115 verse one says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. And we praise God with gratitudes in our heart for his faithfulness. <laughs>
Excellent. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Well, you heard about Antigua, too. Uh, you heard about Tr Trinidad and St. Croix and... <laughs> okay, St. Croix. We have two here, Denise, my partner in crime, and little Jackie. <laughs> okay, that's St. Croix. Uh, so we have uh, Toronto. <laughs> But tell me something. How many of you know Daddy and Nevis? That's good. <laughs> good. So, good. Nice. The Otley's, Sam Farrell. How many of your parents knew my dad? That's right. That's right. Okay. We want to move along quickly because um, I know some of you have to have your beauty sleep for tomorrow. And... Um, my dad also, after he passed it, in, after he retired in uh, Toronto, he refired and uh, moved down to Washington, D.C. So, so we have a whole posse here from Washington, D.C. And Pastor Bassey and Mrs. Bassey um, are here. I'm going to call him Pastor Bassey to come and say a few words. Yeah, there. Good evening, everyone. And Pastor Taylor, congratulations on your 90th birthday. You know, Althea, when you were when you were talking about that wish of another 90 years, I joined with you because we're gonna take 14 of that back to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> we need that 14 years again. Pastor Teller spent 14 years, wonderful years with us. And f amen. And from his wonderful ministry with us, produced another senior pastor, George Passy. Amen. What I'd like to do at this time... Um, because we could not bring everyone from national. And I was thinking if we were to bring everyone from national here, we're going to start a National Westland Church in Toronto. <laughs> and Pastor Taylor could not help but to be the senior pastor. <laughs> but what we did was to bring something from what a lot of people put together. And I'm going to ask my treasurer, Brother Seifert, to please bring that. also want to ask all the... People from Washington, people from National Westland Church, please to come. Let's stand together and just make this presentation. Please come at this time. Isn't that a wonderful display? Amen. You didn't know this when I called you out. You're going to be a choir. <laughs> One of Pastor Teller's favorite hymns, Jesus. There's something about that name. Can we do that together? Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, there is something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain.
Amen. Pastor Taylor, you will always be a pastor. Amen. And many of your congregants put together a lot of things from their heart in what we produce as a scrapbook. And um, one of your dear congregants, Sister Lucia Lawrence, who's also a local, current local church secretary, did a portrait of you. And I'd like for us to see that. But see what can we open that? Opening that um, from the scrapbook. <laughs> from this, read um, what I put together on the first page, and there's a lot, Pastor Taylor, that you will read uh, from here. But I'm writing this on behalf of your congregants who are standing here and those who could not be here. And so this is dated today, December 30th, 2011, to Reverend Dr. Ira Taylor. Congratulations on your 90th birthday celebration. Dear Dr. Taylor, it is with deep gratitude to God and great jubilation that we, the entire congregation of National Westland Church, ISV Maryland, USA, extend our congratulations to you on this occasion of your 90th birthday celebration. This occasion gives us an opportunity to reflect on the wonderful years you shared with us as a senior pastor from 1991 to 2005. Your standing integrity, vision, servant leadership, humility, genuine love, and compassion did bear fruits that impacted more lives than you could ever know. Your legacy at National is also clear that as one of the persons called into pastoral ministry under your leadership, I now stand as the current senior pastor of that great church to read this congratulatory message. We thank you and your dear wife, Eileen, for those wonderful 14 years you gave to the Lord and to us at National. May the Lord continue to bless and sustain both of you and your entire family. Happy 90th birthday and Happy New Year. Congratulations. Patrick. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. This is done by one of your congregants at National Westland Church. Amen. So we put that back. And as I said, there's a lot to read from the scrapbook. It would take you back memory lane from all your congregants. So on behalf of your congregants standing here and those who could not make it here, once again, we want to say to you, congratulations. And pastor, you still look excellent. <laughs> Our sister Madge. short speech for a 90th birthday celebration for Pastor Taylor. A person like Pastor Taylor, who has been an example of strong faith, a sound advisor, an excellent listener, a source of consistent prayer, and a friend. I don't know how that can be done, but here is my short attempt. I would like to first quote a caption from Psalms 1, 12, verses 1 through 4. In the Psalms, David shares how God blesses those who worship him faithfully. I am sure this is about the tailors. And the quote, Shout praises to the Lord. The Lord blesses everyone who worships him and gladly obey his teachings. Their descendants will have great power in the land because the Lord blesses all who do right. 
they will get rich and prosper and will always be remembered for their fairness. They will be so kind and merciful and good that there will be a light in the dark for others who do the right thing. End of quote. I have known Pastor Taylor for a number of years and have had the opportunity to work very closely with him during my role as church secretary at National Wesleyan Church in Maryland. During that period, when the church business was running efficiently, I was picking up steam and patterning the discipline and support that Sister Taylor so coolly exhibits. I almost felt not like the first, but the second lady in Pastor Taylor's life. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, I was not even close. <laughs> the relationship of love, support, and respect for each other that is so evident in their lives, in the lives of Pastor and Sister Taylor, is one to be admired and the ultimate to achieve. I feel very blessed and honored to be here to celebrate with Pastor Taylor tonight because I know that I'm standing here because he prayed for me during the series of illnesses that I have had. And I know himself and Sister Taylor continues to pray for me. Today I'm extending to you, Pastor Taylor, my best wishes for a happy day, your 90th birthday. What a joy it is to celebrate another birthday. My humble prayer for you is for good health and God continued blessings on your life. Happy birthday, Pastor Taylor. I love you. Good evening, everyone. My husband, Tony, and I would join with everyone else to wish Pastor Taylor Daddy T a very happy birthday. In keeping with the theme, nostalgia, I'd like to go back to 2004, when a group of women, including myself, approached Pastor Taylor with the idea of forming a woman's steel pan group. And tonight, I'd like to stand here to say that it was because of Pastor Taylor's gentle fortitude that we have not only a woman's steel pan group, we have a youth group, and then recently, we've had a group of three, four, five-year-olds beginning to play. So he has three generations of panis. Give the man a round of applause. <laughs> and so, Pastor Taylor, for, for that, and for your love, and for your patience with us, I want to wish you happy birthday. The song I'm going to play is The Love of God. And I don't know of anyone else who exemplifies God's love as Pastor Taylor does. Pastor Taylor, God bless you.
of a lot of it's so our joy to be here this evening to celebrate this 90th. I was trying to look and think about spelling the word Ira differently. And the only other way I could come up with spelling the word Ira is L-O-V-E, love. He taught me to love. Not just the people that the people that are easy to love, but the real people that we need to love is to love those who may despise, despisefully use us or our enemies. And he taught me to love. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. He also had, had that pastor's eye of vision to see those in his congregation that were leaders. Not just for his time, but beyond his time. There are several people in this room today who can testify of that. And God allowed them to see that vision. And so in my life, that's represented in my life. But here's one of the stories my wife is going to share that is represented in this room this evening and in other places around the world. Hi, Dad. <laughs> I met Pastor Taylor in the 90s at um, National Wesleyan Church, and I knew Pastor Wingrove from years before because I was a pilgrim holiness. Years and years ago before it became Wesleyan holiness. But anyhow, my story of Pastor Taylor is this, and it's not really a sad story. It might sound sad, but in January of 2004, I think it was the 4th of January, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. And I remember being very scared and not knowing what the outcome would have been and whether I would have survived. And I remember Pastor Taylor and Sister Taylor coming to our house and praying with us and praying that there would be a good outcome in this situation. And about, probably about 11 days after that, I was scheduled for surgery. And you know, David and I are always running late and we get to the hospital for the surgery. And who is there sitting waiting? But Pastor and Sister Taylor, even before my surgery, they're there waiting. And you know, as, as I was being prepared for surgery and the surgeon came into the room and he briefed us and as he left, Pastor Taylor said, let's pray. And to my dying day, I would remember that. He, he got on his knees. And we held hands in that hospital room. And he prayed. And he prayed that out of this situation, some good would come. And the good thing was is that when they discovered the cancer, it was just about to burst through my, the walls of the colon. And so they caught it just in time. And, you know, after the surgery and chemotherapy and everything else, you know, I was doing very good. And then David's brother was diagnosed with cancer, end-stage cancer. And then as my chemotherapy ended, David's brother died. And throughout that time, you know, we were there and Pastor Taylor and Sister Taylor were there supporting us. And there is, there is a good, there's a good part about this story. Pastor Taylor prayed for me so well that two years later on I had a baby. Could you believe that? <laughs> 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 and, and would you believe it, that baby was born two years to date on the day I had surgery, 2004. And we named her Adia, which means gift, because she was a gift from God. But I'm saying all of this because I know my pastor. I saw such love from you. And, and from that, I said, I'm no longer your congregant. Because of your love, I'm your daughter. And blessings and more, I wish you so many more years. And, and the girl said, I know one girl said, I, I said, what do you want to tell Pastor Tinder? I, I like him because he doesn't think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 12-year-old and the 5-year-old who, who's a dear. I said, what do you want to tell Pastor Tinder? I like him because he gives me cookies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we say thank you because of you, we are who 
we are. And so God bless you. And, and as I said, it's not a sad story. It's just the beginning. Thank you, Pastor Dana. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. That's not a sad story, but I have tears in my eyes. Um, I thanks, thank you all, the friends that my parents have um, in Washington, here in Toronto. Um, so many of you will call, some of you will come by and, and bring a pot of soup or some pepper pot or a cake. Um, we really appreciate all that you do to make um, life you know, enjoyable for my parents. Um, at this time, we're rounding up, and I'm going to end with Father. The same title with which we address our God. The very fact that God wishes, wishes to relate to us through fatherhood goes to show just how significant a father is to a family. In fact, a more accurate translation for the word Abba often used in the Bible when addressing God as our Father, is actually Daddy. This shows that God not only wants to be a figurehead, but rather a personal and affectionate Dad. Experiencing the love of my earthly father, I have a foretaste of the heavenly love of my great Father in heaven. Daddy, you were a provider, a bodyguard, parent, and godly example of a husband to my mother. You continue to be an intercessor, counselor, and guide to your children. And so today, we renew our appreciation for you and what you mean to us. I'm not finished welcoming because Aunt Violet and Yvette, Aunt Violet is my mom's first cousin. And now you, in our family, you don't know which side, who is mommy's side or who is daddy's side, because we all need, know each other and we all love each other. And uh, Valerie and, and Annie is here, and we have Angie and Jackie. So we have a big family here in Toronto, and we welcome all of you. We really appreciate you for the love that you show to our parents. Okay. I'm moving on. It's time for the grandchildren. So um, I'm going to call on Andre. Do we have to go find them? There's a thing about tailors. They disappear. <laughs> Andre and um, Paul. Uh, you know what? I'm going to introduce the grandchildren so that you can see. Andre, first boy, where are you? That's my son. Okay, you know what? I'm going to start with my brother Hudson. Hudson's son, Julian. Oh, you're there. I didn't see you. Okay, Julian, the guy with the hat. Shauna. Good. Then uh, the four boys, because some people say they don't, they don't know what my sons look like anymore because they're all grown up. So there's Andre, Paul, Richard, who lives in Calgary, and Ryan. And Andre is married. His wife, Alicia. Could you stand, Elise? So we can, there's Alicia. Good. And Paul is here with his girlfriend, Michelle. <laughs> and guess what? My baby over Christmas, my baby, even though Alfie, Alfie says he's not a baby, he says, Mom, I'm engaged. <laughs> so Ryan is engaged. Ryan. And there's Jacqueline. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to turn it over so that we can move on quickly. Boys? And, but he, he just can't, couldn't make it today, and I'm sorry, but Dean's son, Cameron, and, and we also have a great grand, daddy has a great granddaughter, and she's beautiful, she looks just like me. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, her name is Kiara. So good afternoon, I'm Andre Forster, and this is? Paul Forster. And we are number two and number three of the grandchildren. And I'm just gonna turn it over to my brother to kick us off. Okay, so Barack Obama wrote an autobi autobiography 
Dreams from My Father, uh, recounting the personhood of his father and the influence that it had in shaping him into the man he is today. So right now, we just want to do a little bit of the same with our grandfather, recount some stories that he's told us over the years, and just a little bit of the example that he has set for us. First, Grandpa, Grandpa the Faithful. Ministering in the islands, Grandpa felt God leading him to Canada. Now, I cannot be exactly certain of the facts, but as I recall, Grandpa had drawn up blueprints for his dream home, which he intended to build in the Caribbean. So strong was his desire to follow the Lord's will that he burned the blueprints, which were very dear to his heart, and moved to Toronto. You might not believe it, even as I tell you, but the very same plans for my grandpa's dream home represent the home in which he resides today. Grandpa taught us how to have faith. So this next story is about Grandpa the Brave. And this is a story from his uh, youth in Nevis. Closer to you. Okay. So, adventurous and playful in his youthful teens, Grandpa's, Grandpa and his friends found themselves stranded on a small dock uh, away from the shore. And as they were swimming, they realized that there was a barracuda in the water. <laughs> and so, anxious to return to their playful activities, um, but distracted by this barracuda, they, had, they were sort of stuck on the shore. And so Grandpa and his friends devised a plan to get rid of this barracuda that, that was lingering and not swimming away. So they decided, and <laughs> this is a story straight from his mouth, that they would all get together and on the count of three, jump on this barracuda <laughs> and frighten, frighten him away. And so, just as planned, they, they uh, closed up on the shore and jumped on the barracuda and it torpedoed away. So, Grandpa uh, taught us how to be brave. <laughs> we now bring you to Grandpa the Celebrity. It was at my high school graduation that Grandpa's celebrity first grew in the eyes of my classmates. My good friend, Brian Uchikata, or as we called him, Uchi, asked me why I had not grown taller than six feet, to be generous. I thought his question quite peculiar, and he proceeded to ask me if my family had any relation to Michael Jordan of the Chicago Bulls. He continued to emphasize Grandpa's likeness to Air Jordan, and my other high school friends substantiated his claims. To this day, whenever I catch up with my friends of yesteryear, they ask me how Michael Jordan is doing. <laughs> now, many of you might be perplexed by this comparison, maybe you don't see it, but there is one similarity to which we can all agree. It is a comparison which begs to ask the true family origins of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, <laughs> captain of the Starship Enterprise in Star Trek. <laughs> For those of you who might not be familiar with Star Trek, let me give you a brief dramatic illustration. Captain's Log, Stardate 2011, 1230. Number one, engage. You almost had it. It's more like this. <laughs> Captain's log, star date, 2111230. Number one, engage. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Paul, as we used to say in our sub 30 years, that was money. That was money. Still not convinced? Show the slide, Richard. There you go. There you go. Undeniable empirical evidence. 
Excellent. 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 <laughs> so, in closing, the apologist Ravi Zacharias, and I might have told some of you this before, said, God's infinity is manifested through a child's propensity to exalt in the monotonous. Have you ever heard a child say, do it again, do it again, do it again? I believe this is a part of the secret to grandpa's youthfulness. Every single day, you have succeeded in waking up with a childlike faith. Each morning, as if to say, do it again, Lord, do it again, Lord, do it again. And with that, Grandpa, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs>
Nothing in the world could have broken your fall. We both know that you're crazy. Tell me something new. All I want to do is be with you. Growing up, falling down, trying to pick yourself up before the ground. You tried so hard, you gave it all. There's nothing in the world that could break your fall. We both know I'm crazy. So tell me something new. All I want to do is be with you. Just be with you. Thank you. So that was from the grandchildren, the young ones. So daddy, just no, get ready, just get ready. Um, it's dad's turn to say thank you. And uh, before he does, I just want to thank, I, I'm standing up here, so it looks like I did all the work, but no. This couldn't have been done with uh, the help of uh, my siblings, so we all chipped in. Uh, so thank you to my siblings, and I also want to thank my mother, who you cannot say no to, and <laughs> who just knows how to get a party going. And uh, she did all the invitations and um, sent them out. So that's not my handwriting on it, you know. It's, it's not that nice. <laughs> and uh, so a thank you to um, my sister-in-law, Donna, who is an event planner and helped to um, help me in coordinating uh, making this place look so wonderful. Okay. And also to my daughter-in-law, Alicia, for uh, working on the invitations, and also to all my other girls, the other girls in my life who came by and helped um, me with the preparations. Um, <laughs> uh, I have four boys, and but I have some really nice girls around me, so thank you. Okay, um, Dad also, you know, you think he's retired, refired, whatever, but he also has another ministry here in Toronto, and there's um, Denise, who I um, put on the spot. To, so she is just doing this tonight for Dad because uh, she go, when Dad goes down to their church, um, she's part of the uh, music ministry, and he really enjoys that. And there's a song, um, My Tribute, and Denise is going to come and do that. And as soon as Denise ends, Dad, it's your turn. Denise Williams from Antigua. I don't have to say anything, but I will myself thank uh, Pastor Taylor, who I've, even though I'm from Antigua, didn't know Pastor Taylor until I was helping Father Samuel with the music ministry of Golden Vision Healing Ministries. And certainly Pastor Taylor spoke the word of God. There's just as if it was coming straight. And I must say, I'm, it's such a privilege to be sharing this time with your family and your friends. And I feel the holiness in this place, for sure, and the amplification of God's love. So it came to me as I walked through the door, and Althea says, well, we're going to be singing, aren't we? I said, well, but it did come to me, and I want to thank you for the honor of doing this. I'm going to try to make my way up very gracefully up here. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'll stay up here. But anyway... <laughs> Um, it just came to me that the tribute that I will be singing a cappella is the tribute to God for the blessings. And I would say that um, 
we have an amplification of God's love right here in, in Ira and his, how he has spread this far. So my tribute. Can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you did to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to you. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I should gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he hath raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done for me. Amen. You need a cane? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am traveling to Canaan. And they tell me that a man is only the sum total of all the people he has met, all the people he has met, thank you, all the people he has fellowshiped with, and all the people he has lived with. So the real truth is, that all I am is a reflection of you beautiful people. I have been blessed and highly favored to have had the great privilege of meeting and fellowshipping, of living with some of the greatest people in the world. And you, some of you, are here tonight. I consider myself highly privileged 
Because above everything else, one of the most important things is to be one or a member of a circle of love. Wherever there is a circle of love, there is a dynamic that is powerful, that bring, brings healing to those whose hearts are hurting, brings healing to those who are lonely and sad. And God's plan, of course, was not that we should be alone, but rather we should be in a fellowship together to help, support, encourage, inspire, and love each other. It is my profound conviction that love will win the day. You can look around the world and see hate everywhere, but love will win the day. For the simple reason that darkness cannot destroy light. It could be ever so small. It will light up the corner of darkness. So I personally am the privileged one to be a part of this circle of love. Somebody met me the other day and said, golden years. Why does I call it golden when every bone in your body is hurting? <laughs> so I said to them, I have golden years and I'm enjoying them because I have golden memories. And they are vivid, glowing, inspiring, and uplifting. And even if my bone hurts, I am dreaming of the glorious and wonderful days I've had in my life. It started in Nevis, Leave us again. And I had a mother and a father that was very unusual. My father was a disciplinarian, no nonsense. And uh, he wanted to make a pad of whiskey out of me. So I and the rest of us had to practice half an hour every day and one hour on Saturdays. And you know when he would come and ask us if we had practiced, when we'd put on our pajamas. And if we could not say yes, we were in trouble. He was a disciplinarian. One day I was practicing my chromatic scales without my book, and he came to said, Ira, you're not practicing the piece that Miss Bridgewater has given to you. Why don't you practice, son? You sound like a piano tuner. <laughs> he was a wonderful man, but my mother was most unusual. Um, every Friday night, we had a party with our girlfriends and boyfriends, and we fried frat sprats in the moonlight. Does anybody know what sprats are? <laughs> yeah. And we dipped it in pepper and lime juice and sang, it's a long, long way from Tipperary. Long way from... And we would dance in the moonlight. And my... I'm glad tonight that I have some people who date back there with me. My brother and my sister are here. 
and we had great times together. When Wingrove and I wrote, we would end with an, a triangle, and he would put W-Y-N, I would put I-R-A, and it meant my a blood brother, a brother in Christ, and a ministerial brother. So we have had a great bond for the years. And my sister has been my pal ever since. She kept me out of trouble. Uh, and she would be the, the, the trumpeter. Ira, Papa is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then I left Nevis and went to Jamaica. I left some beautiful girls in Nevis, yeah. But <laughs> Nevis again. <laughs> and in those days, if you uh, wanted to go out with a lady, you had to have a chaperone. And you won't believe this one. The highest authority in the church in Jamaica came and asked Eileen and myself to uh, develop a Sunday school in Papine, a place a few, about a half a mile from the, where the West Indian University is at the moment. Uni West, University of the West Indies. And you wouldn't believe this. They sent us alone. And we, we went by bus after lunch for many days, many months, we went down the river <laughs> visiting and starting the Sunday school. I understand they have a church there now. Well, when you put an amazing, unbelievable, beautiful woman with a handsome man with the same <laughs> dream. <laughs> The same purposes in life of giving their lives to, to the church for anything, anytime, anywhere. You have a bomb on your hand. <laughs> and it exploded. <laughs> and, this is, and this is what you have tonight. <laughs> It exploded. <laughs> and so I'm asking my wife to stand and take a bow. <laughs> and of course, she has a family, you know, her side of the family. And and uh, Althea already introduced them, and I'm very happy that they are here. And so after that, of course, we went into ministry, and God was so good to us. He gave us some of the best people in the world to work with. And I was highly blessed to have wonderful people on my church board. And uh, God blessed us in a marvelous and remarkable way. And of course, she has already introduced the people from Maryland, but not all of you stood. So I'd like to stand again and take a bow. All of the people from. Have they left? <laughs> uh, 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 Oh, yeah. Very good. Thank you. And of course, those are the folk from Maryland out of town. They're gracious and wonderful. They, they call us all the time to see if we are all right. And there's a bond here that's unbelievable. And of course, the people from Toronto. There's a wonderful circle of love here in Toronto. And I'd like all the people from Toronto to stand. Are you here? Yeah. Yeah. 
beautiful. And of course, the, there's a lady that we just met. She played the piano. Julie, Jillian Hobson. Is she here? She, she played the piano. And incredible. And then, of course, I do have my clergy friends here. I'm so glad to have them. Uh, members of the clergy, could you stand? And take a bow. Have they left? Okay. That's and over here. That's wonderful. Now let me tell you what I prayed about for this evening. I prayed that this evening would be a great blessing. It's been a, a great evening, a great evening. My heart has been moved, blessed, tears have fallen down my cheek several times. But one of the things I was praying for, and this happens in every circle where you have a circle of love, there is a dynamic that's powerful beyond expression and that in these dynamics people are healed. If you are here and you feel lonely, that you have no friends, talk to somebody, even talk to me and let us put our arms around you and let you know that you are not alone in the world. Of course, I do have some wonderful children demonstrated this evening by the trumpet, by master of ceremonies. <laughs> she could go to Hollywood and, <laughs> and Paul can play in the orchestras of the world and, and Hudson, oh my goodness me. He could, they could use him in Hollywood for taking pictures, and uh, they're wonderful. Will all my five children stand with your with your companions? And uh, and their children. Oh, wonderful. And the grand. That's wonderful. And their wives and, and, and girlfriends. And wonderful. That's so beautiful. And now I wish all of you the consciousness of the overshadowing of the Almighty. There's one thing about Christmas that is beautiful. It is the coming of Christ. And he came to take our place on Calvary. And when we accept him as our Savior and as our, as our Lord, we become one with God. And no one should ever think of God only as a creator or a judge. You should also know him as an intimate friend. And when you know him as an intimate friend, then you will also know that you're in tune with the infinite and anything can happen. So I hope to see you another hundred years from now in celebration, whether here or there. <laughs> Other medical doctors are now saying that the heart is the strongest organ in the body. And um, 
it can beat for another, for at least for 200 years. So I have not given up on anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so God only knows and it's a delight to be with you this evening I feel your warmth I feel your love may God richly bless you and keep you the master of ceremonies is now telling me that my the mistress she's telling me that my time is up <laughs> so all that I want to tell you is God bless you and keep you, and see you soon. an enjoyable night and we just wish the tailors many 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 more okay he's always been a blessing to us through the years we had a wonderful time tonight and children did a great job we loved it yes. everybody what do we wish wish 
that God would bless him, continue to bless him, and that this year would be a special year for him. Uh, he's 90th. I wish him well, and that he will have a great and prosperous 2012. God bless. What's the youngest one? Next one. Is that the one that's ahead? Brother and Sister Mary saying God bless you, Dr. Taylor. It was a beautiful evening to be here. Have a wonderful New Year yourself and family. Uh, Happy New Year, Pastor Taylor, Uncle Ira. We got to be part of your family and thanks for all the stories about my, my grandpa, uh, Hobson. All the best to you and your family. Amen. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> oh, I wish the best for the for Ira and his wife. The and entire family. The entire family. And may God bless them and their family. A lovely, lovely, lovely care of people and an excellent pastor. And we wish the best for them. That's correct. It was a lovely evening. Yes, bye-bye. I had an awesome time. I'm so honored to be here. I feel like part of the family because I've been in the Taylor home since they moved to Toronto. I love Pastor Taylor and Althea and Donna are like my sisters. Um, I feel like a part of the family. I had a wonderful time. I hope he lives to be another 190. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have a marvelous time. I wish Pastor Taylor a very, very happy 90th birthday and I ask the Lord will continue to keep him in excellent condition. I love you, Dad. We've had a wonderful, wonderful time tonight and I'm taking away the positive attitude of Pastor Taylor. I'm excellent. Yes, I had a good time. It was jolly good. Couldn't deserve better. His, um, I admire Pastor Taylor and it was a pleasure being here. Thank you. Good night, Pastor and Sister T. Wish you all the best, long life, and a good time we had tonight. Amen. My sentiments exactly. But Pastor Till, I want to tell you I love you. You've yes. been a wonderful example to me. Mm. And I hope to see you either here or over there yeah. in the next hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. We had a great time. And happy birthday, Grandpa. We love you. Yep. Good night. We had such a great time. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it was a delight to be here. And I am so grateful and so privileged that I was here. I want to wish Pastor Taylor all the best in the years to come. He said 120. He's well on his way there. God bless each and every one. Happy New Year. Thank you. It was a really exciting evening and it was pleasurable for us to be here. To be anywhere else would be completely out of place. It was spectacular. <laughs> Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! We had an excellent time. And uh, maybe it's again? <laughs> awesome! I had a wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Congratulations, Daddy Taylor. Best wishes on your birthday and happy new year to you and your family and all your loved ones. God bless. We had a fantastic time. It was really, really and a we really enjoyed being with Pastor Taylor and his family. Happy New Year to everybody. Take care. <laughs> Hi Daddy, I want to wish you a very happy 90th birthday tomorrow. I want to say thank you for being there for me through all the years you've been there for me. You're like a father. I've never seen such love generated from one human being as you have done for me and my family. And I want to say thank you, Daddy, for always being there. God bless you. I love you so much. Bye. Hi, Pastor Taylor. I see you still batting that out. Just stay and take your time until so that you can make the century. God bless you. Love you.
I have to say that uh, my brother has been a tower of strength and influence in my life, and I appreciate deeply his example and his pattern and his friendship and the fellowship we have shared across so many years. I always admired Ira and I was very pleased with what was said about him tonight. He's a terrific example and I pray that his life would still be used to help many others. Hello, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yeah, good night, Uncle. We love you. We're Happy so birthday. glad. We traveled all the way from Cincinnati. You have touched my heart, and you showed me that there's more to fire and brimstone. Like Dad used to preach, you showed me love and peace and happiness. Thank you, Uncle. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Uncle Ira. Uncle Ira. And many more. Yes, on Channel 4. <laughs> on Channel 4. Okay, well, what can I say? What an incredible evening. Tremendous. Evening. It was just tremendous. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. God's blessing. Adios. Bye-bye. Take my glasses off. Hi, this is Jeannie. Oh, <laughs> this is Jeannie. What more can I say? Nobody knows more than me how much you've meant to me. For all these many years, I've been in and out of your house. And it has been such a delight. Thank you for being all that you have been. And God's blessing on you, on you and wish you all the best. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good night. Good night. I had a fantastic time. Yeah, I walked right into it. Uncle Ira, it was great to be here, and we had a fantastic time. It was nice to, to be in the presence of all this love, and we wish you all the best for the new year. I had the best time, and I felt the zing in the room. I mean, it was like heightened. It was dense, only because Uncle Ira is the one that inspired us all to get together. I loved it. Cheers. Good time. Great time, great time. Great time. It was such Fabulous a blessing night. to hear in all the stories. And everybody did well. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year also. Take care. Bye. Wonderful time together. This was a wonderful evening. And the dynamics of love was felt. And I trust that there's healing. And the people who are lonely found friends. Thanks, all Thanks to children. all of my children and to all those who took part. It was a wonderful evening. God bless. Bye-bye.